Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ever happen. Right. All right. Good evening. This is uh, Tuesday, March 19th, and this is the March Curriculum Committee, Curricular and Co-Curricular Activities Committee. Um, and thank you everyone for coming and uh, giving us your time this evening so we can get through some stuff. We do have some things on the agenda and we always have some lively conversation. So why don't we go ahead and get started? I think first up we have uh, Mr. Schneider, and we have a couple of items from him. First one is the uh, band course strip update. Oh, we're gonna start. Okay, with the discussion yeah. items. Sure, no problem. That's what I'm gonna say. So, good evening, everyone. At the last curriculum committee meeting, I believe I presented the Hawaii trip for the band and chorus, and we have been um, invited to uh, once again return to Hawaii for the first time since 2016 uh, to perform. It's very exciting. So, at that point, we weren't sure if there was going to be interest. We weren't sure what the situation was. So we did. Um, I did look into the things that the committee asked me to look into. We did put out uh, tentative info to students with the ability to put down a hundred dollar deposit on the trip, which is for next uh, March 2025. Um, I would say it's an understatement that there is interest. There's almost 140 students putting that have put deposits down so far. So which is more than we brought in 2016 already, and they're coming in more. So we expect that what number, was that number again? Uh, approximately 140 students put deposits down. Yeah, um, we expect more to trickle in over the next uh, couple months before the end of the school year. So we're very excited about that about that possibility. So the trip uh, definitely has the interest, and um, people are very eager to um, get rolling on the next step now. The committee asked me to look into a little bit about costs on the trip as far as the districts go and um, the air, the air travel is booked to last actually, which I, which I was able to find out. So that's going to book once we have a total number, we will get a group rate. So right now we don't know which airport we will be traveling out of, but we do know um, it'll be one of the, one of the, wherever we can get the best group rate. Uh, so that's still up in the air. Um, but that is self-funded by students, and they will be able to, um, like I said, fundraise um, through cheesecake, cookie sales, Krispy Kreme, all the stuff that I should not be eating, but uh, but I will probably buy anyway. So, <laughs> so um, right now, the trip is going to need six chaperones based off of the number that we have right now. That is mostly covered by the travel company, minus a few things. We will need one nurse, which is totally separate from the chaperones, and that is going to be the negotiated rate uh, for our nurses for over the course of five days. So there will be so there'll be one nurse provided to that. Any additional chaperones on top of that will be extra by the district. Um, I don't anticipate us needing more than six. However, if something happens and another 50 students come on board, we will need extra adults for the chaperone to uh, to uh, student ratio. Um, other costs are going to be just like any trip buses from this building, the high school to whatever airport the flight is out of, and that is to the airport. And then when they come home from Hawaii, the bus will be there waiting for them on the way back. And that will be the standard, um, bus rate. Um, $2,600 actually covers, uh, all costs, including travel and hotel, um, for students, by the way, it's going to be no more than 2,600. Um, there will be six teachers um, plus one nurse. The six teachers for every night in Hawaii, which is going to be um, it's going to be four nights, is going to be 119 per night, which is the negotiated rate um, per per chaperone. Um, and then the only other thing will be the meals and incidentals uh, for teachers, which will plus the nurse, which will be worked out depending on on there. Some of that is covered by the tour company. Some of it um, will not be like, not all three meals will be covered, but a certain portion will that's still um, up in the air, but we have an exact number. And that those are all go going to be the cost to the district total. This is up still approximate right now because we don't know, but um, to give you an idea, that would be, what the district would be um, on for this field trip. But we are very excited uh, that there's so much interest in this. And uh, I think it's gonna be a once in a lifetime memory for uh, for, for many of the students. So we're very excited. So all the costs are negotiated costs in the right. teacher's agreement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Buses are $75 an hour. Um, and the length of time we need the buses are 
uh, a function right. of uh, which airport they go to. Right. So, and I do envision uh, from just doing some some bus calculation, I'm thinking four buses for, for that kid. If it's if it's not more, I think four buses should be. Um, Will we need an equipment bus? No, because I because the students are going to travel with their instruments. Like if it's a trumpet, it will go on on the car on a, on a carry on, so they'll be able to do it. Food they'll carry on. Um, luckily, we will not be bringing any of our beautiful marimbas to Hawaii. They will <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they will have those there. Um, I don't anticipate a, 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 a truck for that. I think okay. it's going to be um, on the there. And then um, if it's the the um, what do you call the the coach buses. There's an underneath section um, that they could put larger things such as trombones, French horns. Um, that's and then they'll something. be checked as part of. The they will be. They will be checked. Flutes will uh, stay on the lap. So. <laughs> <laughs> Flutes and piccolos. Flutes and piccolos. Right. Oh, you need to go on the carry on. Right. Okay. So, so if there's any questions. Um, any board members have any questions? I do, but I'm not sure it's a question for Doctor uh, Mr. Snyder, but it's probably a question for the administration. Given we're, what we're looking at on the second question mm -hmm. in the in on the ballot, the 2.75 million already accounts for this is a school sponsored expense for the trip, besides what the students are paying for themselves, right? So we factored it in into mm -hmm. the 2.75. Yep. Yeah. And so if it's important to state it right now that if if that passes, it, things it, are it bad because usually if it doesn't pass, it, the students will have to pick up the cost. The students traveling will have to pick up the cost of all of the things that we just discussed. Not well, necessarily. Is it in a standard no, budget? It's in, it's in a standard budget. Yeah. It's in a standard right. budget. Oh, so it's not, not a question. Some of those it's standard standard budget. Budget. Because this is an after school. This is it's a, a cool. It's a little more contractual. I'm glad I asked the question. Embedded, right. in, embedded the in the overall cost. And we're in looking at budget. minimal cost. So for the public that's watching, we're talking six times $119. Yeah. Then they cannot say they would have to lay mignon because it is a standard payment back for whatever. So if they go and they say during this event, they are going to provide them with breakfast and lunch, dinner on your own. And the only thing yep. that the teachers, those six people get paid for, that for could be seventeen fifty or twenty six fifty. It's a standard rate is for New Jersey State. Right. If we provide them with a bus and they choose to travel, they should not choose to travel in their own car because then they don't have to get paid back for miles. So we're talking a very, very minimal cost of dinner. And it is covered That's in our uh, the nurse rate, I believe, is the same one nineteen. The for one nineteen oh, well, per but, but we will the district is covering the nurse. The nurse is not included in oh. Oh, correct. So the air trip for the nurses. Right. So the, that was the only thing that would not be correct. They're not, they're not a chaperone. Right. Mm -hmm. They're talking less than five. Thank you. Way less than five than I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's a question because, you know, we do have concerns, but we are very excited. And this is something that we would want to not remove. Well, I don't want to oh, it's an honor five. to be invited to go. And I think that that's where, you know, that's the, we don't want to, I don't want to lose sight of that for the money. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was an honor. It's an honor to go. It represents our town. It represents our district. It represents the amazing things that happen in this school district with our music program and and our students and and to have this Fantastic. interest you know 140 students i know what it was like with the amount of students that went to hawaii last time that was fun um, <laughs> but uh it's, and this will be fun too but it's just you know it, it, we just have to be you know absolutely and um thank bless you for the research yep. thank you for coming back to the committee with the with the um items that we asked for so i do appreciate absolutely it. and thank you for the support the other cool thing uh, last thing i'll say about this is we have right now with the students that have put the posit down it's a pretty good split between band and chorus That's too. Nice. so nice. we're if all the students that go right now we are guaranteed we have a chorus we guarantee we have uh the instrumental group that plays as well so that was i was that was one of the questions uh i had asked mr nagpaul when um when inquiring about this so uh, so that's pretty cool as well okay. just with process this will be on the evil agenda so the meetings quickly quickly coming up. So any of the documents we have, we put them on the April agenda, and this will go on as an approval for April. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit, and since you're the first item on the curriculum documents, sure, go for it. All right. Again, if I'm going too long, you cut me off, <laughs> please. Oh, I, I, I can get <laughs> so I'm really excited to present mom, which I think will be my final curriculum document for our departments for this for this uh, for this school year, which is a brand new course at Monroe Township Middle School, which is our MTMS theater arts, which is a curricular theater class um, that is open to students in grades seven and eight as part of their elective. 
students are going to be able to uh, be introduced to the art of theater um, by really nurturing our appreciation of the art and how it can be utilized um, as a tool for self-realization. They're going to be able to explore different elements and principles of theater. Um, they were going to explore script, character analyzation, um, theatrical problem solving, learn about improv, um, different types of theater performances, um, as well as really exploring the essential roles in what goes into a theater production in here. And throughout this course, they're going to well, uh, really work on developing their social skills, their confidence in performing, and the ability to really work well uh, with others. Because any theater production, it is a team effort to, uh, it is a team, um, you know, collaboration to make a successful theater um, theater production. Some of the highlights that I took from this document, which um, which I thought was excellently written, I want to give um, kudos to Miss uh, Lisa Costantino, uh, who did a great job writing this. Um, they're going to start out with really learning the basics of theater, which is, for instance, what is the difference between theater and film? Uh, what are theater roles and job descriptions, such as the playwright, the director, the actor, the actress? Um, they're going to understand students how to um, use gesture to tell a story and how to project their own voices, but also learning how to use different character voices, depending on what uh, play there are and different techniques. Uh, Ms. Costantino is one of our choral directors, so she has that background that she's able, the musical background to provide to um, to these students. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, they're going to develop acting skills, such as uh, understanding and using basic, uh, understanding using basic stage directions, improvisation, which is one of the key elements here of the course, um, is to be able to improv and learn improv techniques, starting very small and expanding on there on the spot. Um, they're going to be able to create both um, to act out a written scene and an improv scene with starting with a partner and then expanding to bigger groups, um, you know, in a production. Um, they will be learning the parts and science be behind the Greek behind the Greek theater, the Greek amphitheater, which um, it gives some history to the course as well and some context. They're going to use context clues to um, understand Shakespearean uh, Shakespeare and, and the Shakespearean play. Um, students will leave this course also understanding different types of characters, such as what is a main character, what is a supporting character, and different roles within whatever production that they're studying or acting out, and then being able to perform uh, their own version of a scene based on a Shakespearean play. So I thought that was uh, uh, some nice highlights. They will, um, towards the end of the course, work on putting on a production and creating a scene uh, design based on the script. So depending on what um, they're doing, they're going to learn um, about scene creation and what really gives the eye to the to the viewer uh, going along with the with the scripts in the play. Um, something that I think is really important in here um, that I was very glad to see is um, going over tricks of the trade of auditioning because as in the, whether it's a for a school play or outside for a community play or if they go further in the, in the world. These spots are won by audition and the roles are won by audition. So part of this course, they're going to be able to learn tricks on auditioning and how to really um, maintain their students' nerves and what to do to prepare for the audition correctly, which I think is um, just a valuable skill just in life over uh, that, that they can that they can do here. And then the process of creating um, a theatrical work from beginning to end. Um, what we are going to do is because this is um, a course and and it opened to students who are just interested in learning about theater and beginning in theater. We are going to as part of the end of the year uh, sort of celebration for the course. We are going to put on a very small production in more of a coffee house style for the students in this class. So they will get to uh, perform uh, the skills that they've learned uh, th throughout the year. And this curricular course opens the door to activities both at the middle school, but also as they go up to the high school. We do have a curricular theater class at the high school, which I'm hoping um, to give a reboot on um, uh, and as early as next year. Um, there are theater productions at the middle school, at the high school that they'll be able to audition for and take part in and find that might be something they're really interested in and knowing the different roles of theater. There's many different ways that they can get involved. And there's also the club aspect too that we offer here um, as well. So this is a excellent document. Again, I wanna give kudos to Ms. Costantino for uh, the work she's done 
in the class this year. I've observed it. It's excellent. And the work she did in this document, and I would be remiss if I didn't give a plug for everyone out there listening. This is our musical for the middle school week. We are doing Shrek Junior, the musical this week um, on Thursday evening, Friday evening, and Saturday's matinee at the, um, at the MTMS pack. I didn't want to peek too much because I want to be surprised when I go on uh, Friday night to see it, but I, I couldn't help myself and I did uh, get a small sneak preview. It is fantastic. I, uh, I wrote my welcome letter. We're going to have to pinch ourselves and remind us that we're not in New York City's theater district. We're just in the middle school pack because the talent of these students is excellent. I think anyone that goes will have a wonderful uh, night or afternoon out. So please come uh, see our middle school students this week. Excellent. Thank you. This is an elective course? Yeah. I didn't want to include. Oh, and one other. Um, <clears throat> this course is being treated also the same way students can split band and chorus in middle school for vocalists and instrumentals. They can also split theater and chorus or theater, you know, but they can't. They're not able to do all three, but they are able to split with um, with uh, a, one of the other performing arts courses the same way that band and chorus have been able to do for for um, as long as I can remember. Okay. So, yeah. Anybody else on the committee have a question? I just have a comment. Yes, ma'am. So I just want to say thank you because this is something that I was very excited about when I was principal. Every year we talked about doing this, and every year we had great concerns that our band and chorus students were the students that would be affected, and then we would hurt the band and chorus program. So I want to compliment you by allowing the split because then it remain it allows the band and chorus students to remain in band and chorus. They do have to make some decisions. Yes. Because we do allow band and chorus. So I'm excited about this. Yeah, me too. And um, me too. this is a good and I have to tell you, I just have to compliment her because I used to teach a drama course mm -hmm. at a college level. And everything that she has in here as the highlights is exactly so you can see of what we did at a college level. So I had to just give a shout out. You did a great job. Yeah. Absolutely. Highlights. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't have a question. Yes. First the comments. So I agree. I can't imagine a theater play without chorus students. So it's great that they can mm -hmm. be part of the um does the middle school production that always so sought after have any tie ups with the theatrical class or their production is entirely entirely different. different. That's entirely after school. It's not taking the elective can also continue to audition absolutely space. Absolutely. And and I would say um a big chunk of the theater that is not enrolled in in okay. in this class um because they are um either doing another elective or they are doing band full time or oh, horse full time right. there are there are a lot of choices but um but it has no direct tie in no correlation they can audition for the musical which is Shrek this year but um after, which is totally after school and totally oh, thank yeah. you yeah thank you okay, Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's stick with curriculum documents. We have Ms. Daniel Brust has a few things for us tonight. Hi, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so um, the first document that I will share with you is our biotechnology course. That is an elective course that runs at the high school. Um, the reason that we updated this curriculum is in the past, it has been taught as a half year semester course. And we have now transitioned it for next year that it's going to be a full year course. So um, I'm very excited to be able to share this with you. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting things in here um, that's really going to be um, great for our students. So <clears throat> this course, the units include an introduction to biotechnology, a basic talking about DNA and proteins. Um, and then we move into some more interesting areas such as infectious and chronic diseases, um, manufacturing medicines and vaccines, genetically modified plants and animals, um, bioremediation, so using living things to remediate environmental disasters. Um, one of my personal favorites, ethical considerations and longevity, um, how to you know, extend um, the human lifespan. Um, the economic impact and the role in pop culture, um, a lot of times students think that what they're seeing on TV um, is really the experience they would get if they went into that type of career. But um, a lot of times, you know, CSI is not really a great um, indicator of what working in a lab truly would be. And then um, the career readiness and, and preparation piece where um, the writer of this curriculum, Mr. Olszewski, he did a really great job including um, different pieces of panel discussions and what would a resume look like and what kind of skills would you need in science? 
Um, these other things, uh, they talk about the FDA approval process. How does that work? What would be, um, you know, safe science when you're working in a lab? There are labs built in, such as gel electrophoresis that the students can perform. Um, and then anytime we're talking about this type of technology, there's also the ethical piece, um, really trying to get students to understand, um, you know, yes, this is the science behind it, but there's also larger questions that we as a society are going to have to answer as, you know, some of this science progresses forward. So um, we're really excited to be able to extend it to a full year. Um, and that is our document. Do you have any questions on that? I, I, have, I just have one sort of question. Um, for courses like this, do we ever reach out to the community? Because we are pretty large with biotechnology here in the state of New Jersey. Do we ever reach out to any companies that um, we, we can these fields to come in and you know sort of teach we more can certainly or you know um, I mean, like yeah we can certainly explore doing more of that. Um, we had some speakers coming in to some of our students years ago from Rutgers and other places, um, but then COVID happened and right um, yeah, yeah. yeah and that's so. Great. That is kind of that is definitely something that um, I can suggest that we can you know look into because it definitely would be good for the kids to see you know that in action, especially um, you know kids really hearing like this is what a career like this would be like. Um, so. Yeah, there's a lot. There's there's a lot in the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Yep, the big um, Especially the pharmaceutical industry. industry. Um, there's also the food industry. I don't know how much this gets into that, yeah. but there is the food industry and there's quite a few organizations, you know, companies, mm -hmm. international flavors and fragrances is one of them. Givadon is another. Yep. Um, there's a couple, quite a few of them. So there's definitely, I think, a lot of room for us to grow this course as we move to it progressing to a full year. You know, we had it as a semester course, but now we're really able to expand. And um, that's so there's a lot that we can really take on as we move forward. Anybody else have a question? question. Pardon? Do we need to hire more teachers? Is this, and how many sections? So when it was a half year course, the way we would work it is that it was it, it varied every year, but typically we would run a total of six sections, six, six sections. Sorry about that. Three each. Some, like three each half year. So now um, we haven't done our course tallies yet. Um, we'll see, you know, how many that we need to offer. But um, we have staff that has taught this course for a long time. We don't need to um, hire any new staff members. Thank you. Yes, you may. <laughs> this was offered to what grade level? Is there any prereq? There's no prerequisites um, other than, you know, finishing um, biology and um, the one. Yes, so, um, but we have offered it to juniors and seniors. Um, that's the predominance who have taken it, um, the but they have. can, but more prevalent is juniors and seniors who have taken it. So when you say it's a semester, it was being done as a semester, mm -hmm. what was it being paired with? So there are other half year semester options that we had within the science department, which we also are transitioning to fill year courses. So you'll hear more about those in the upcoming months. Okay. So a lot of times what students chose to take would be forensics or they had the option of taking astronomy or the option of taking aerospace. Okay. So what they would do is they would pair those up. So now all of those courses that I mentioned will become Full year standalone courses. So they'll have that opportunity. And I want to commend you on that idea. That's a great idea. And that's work with the, you know, all the possibilities and interest in. Thank you. Yeah, kids would be inspired to pursue further. Yes, this is really a great opportunity as we move to, you know, having more time yes. to really explore this because this is, you know, the future, so to speak, of, of science. That's right. Thank you. Um, so chemistry, chemistry. So um, the only real true updates to this document was making sure that they were aligned with our um, 2020 New Jersey um, science standards. So 
we needed to um, rework it, just make sure that we're hitting all of those marks. Um, so <clears throat> the units in this document, and just so everybody is clear, this is our chemistry. There are three um, chemistry levels that are offered, chemistry, honors chemistry, and AP chemistry. So this is the chemistry um, that is the grade 10 course. Um, we have our units include chemical reasoning, which is basically an introduction to measurement, how to use data, the tools that a chemist would use, the structure of matter, the periodic table, chemical bonding, chemical reactions, stoichiometry, which is everyone's favorite, um, converting to moles and all that really good stuff, um, behavior of gases and solution. It is exciting. Um, <laughs> so. Lab experiences are, of course, um, built into all of this, um, and also we try to create real world authentic application. Um, another nice piece of this is wherever applicable, the teachers try to also include what are called FET, P-H-E-T, simulations, which are basically online um, virtual uh, demonstrations, or lab, and in some cases, lab experiences where if the chemicals that we would need to use would be, you know, too dangerous um, to use in a high school classroom, they still have the ability to um, see this in action, see the demonstration, and see what would happen in a safe way um, rather than putting everyone in a not good situation. So, um, they did a really great job making sure that we've met all those indicators that the state is asking. Okay. So I have the question, the 2020 standard science standards mm -hmm. are the latest standards from the state. Is Correct. That those are the latest standards. And they That's are because it's 2024, you know, yes. it's it's, people get a little, you know, yes. not behind. These are the latest. These standards are the latest standards to us from the state. Correct. And they are also, we also use, as I've um, talked about. I'm sure many times the next generation science standards, which are the universal standards that um, for across the country um, and the New Jersey standards are typically based off of those next generation science standards. So we're aligned across the nation. We're aligned across the nation. Any of my colleagues have any questions, concerns? Do you have a question? No, I was back in the valley. <laughs> I like you surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I can give the credit to Mr. She did a good job. <laughs> okay. I don't think we're going to ask. <laughs> Answered all the questions before they yeah. got to the end. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we're up. Dr. Higgins, right. to talk to us about the final exam. So, this is a brief update. Oh, work for us. Yep. This is a brief update for, uh, to, of where we are in looking at the final exam. We uh, first started talking about this at the end of the school year last year and then throughout the summer. Um, on a what we were calling a macro level at that time, we were talking about general uh, general numbers and figures of what finals looked like, and uh, we talked about spending the year looking at it at more of a micro level. Um, so I was first supposed to give this update in November, or I was asked to give this update in November, and I could not make it because of my schedule. Uh, and I think we've been kind of bouncing around since then. So, um, so I apologize for that. Uh, what we've been doing since the last summer is really taking the uh, final exams and aggregating them and stratifying them into smaller numbers. Uh, we started out with 13,417 final exams. Um, and we've been working internally to break those numbers, break those, those numbers down into smaller categories, looking at content areas, looking at, sorry, that's my phone. Looking at content areas, looking at specific subjects within, the, within those content areas, grade bands, um, looking at uh, specific teachers and ultimately students, um, which you can imagine takes some time with that with that many uh, students. But every student has their own individual story to tell really when it comes to uh, looking at the numbers and um, looking at specifics of where students are before they take the test, what they do on the test, and where they wind up afterwards. So when I say every student is different, we have students that have a zero on a final because they choose not to take a test. Um, they're in a situation where they have a 95, a 96, a 97, or a 98 in the class, and 
Maybe they don't take the test because they know that they're still going to get an A in the end. That is a definite possibility with some students. Do you have students that have, are in a course that maybe uh, it, they are already failing and they know taking the test is not going to do them any, any good, so they choose not to take that test. Um, and then looking at students where they are on the cusp between an A and a B or a B and a C and see where they fall on their test uh, and making those comparisons. Um, the process that we are in is not going to be complete until we look at our, uh, our finals from this year. So we've made some changes uh, that will affect the numbers this year as compared to last year. Uh, as you know, we've had conversations about reducing the percentage of the uh, of what the um, what the finals calculate into the final average. Um, we've also made changes in scheduling, uh, which is something that we've talked about at meetings in the past where we've gone from an open access uh, scheduling process to where students were kind of taking any level that they wanted to uh, and moved back really to a recommendation prerequisite waiver type of process, which we which we really just started this year. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be very interesting to see where students fall on. Are they taking the classes that they should be taking other than the classes that they maybe should or should not be taking? Um, we've also focused on with our teachers uh, uh, planning for spiraling lessons. Uh, which are especially in courses that build on skills where they plan within their lessons to revisit former lessons uh, and spiral back to build on skills one after another throughout the year to work on um, retention processes uh, for those for those classes. Um, I actually observed a class today where, where a teacher did a spiral spiral lesson, which has really become uh, embedded into their daily activity. I actually, which doesn't happen all the time, but I thought I'd bring it up here. I have an advisory committee of students and they actually brought it up to me. Uh, they said, what is spiraling? Because they were actually talking about it in the classroom now. So it was very interesting that I got that dialogue from students and they did respond by saying it was something new for them. And it was actually interesting how much they can go back and look at past lessons and build on the skills moving forward too. Um, so, so the the other things that we can look at when we're looking at different classes and different teachers about the skills that they're using in their class. Um, like I said, every student has a different story when they're going through, just like every class and every teacher. Um, I plan on doing the same thing, but much quicker with with our grades for our final exams this year. And I plan on having a report sometime this summer as far as where we were and where we're, where our outcomes are. And we can take that data and build on that and see if we need to make any changes in the future. So that's really where we are uh, as far as an update is concerned. Um, and I, I don't I don't foresee uh, I don't foresee a, a long wait after our finals are complete this year and getting a full picture of where we're at. And our percentage has changed. Our percentages of oh the what the final exam counts as correct yes we, no well the public yes. is watching so I want to make sure yep. that yeah no I, I I did say that that was one of the things that we changed this year yeah. going into our final exams um I'm I'm really interested I think um I think the biggest impact will be moving into the the prerequisite recommendation uh, process to 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 make sure students are. Um, Appropriately placed in and this, this year, the students are placed as per teacher recommendation. Right. The last correct. There is, was not the correct. result. Correct. Of the there is a di there is definitely a difference between last year's finals and this year's finals. Yeah. It's hard to decide. What, well, percentage did we change for last year? Percentage we didn't change for last year. That is also a change. Too. So, so looking at that, you will see you should see a difference in um, before finals and after finals and what those numbers look like as far as. Uh, the final grade as compared to the grade before going into the final. Um, but again, you'll you'll still see individual students. You'll yes, see a student who is a 90 outliers. that may not do great on the final that winds up with an 89, and that's a difference between an A and a B. So um, there are definitely those on the cusp of each of each level. Um, but uh, it is it is definitely a process. Um, as you, as many of you have who used data in in the past, you know that you once you you calculate one line of data, then something else pops up that you have to calculate that as well. Um, and then when you talk to other people and they say, well, we like to look at 
You know, what it does, what does it mean for all freshmen? What does it mean for all sophomores? I mean, you're looking at different, uh, different variables that way too. So it's definitely a process. It's a big number. Um, uh, and uh, we're learning a lot as we go through, which will make next year's process. But it's definitely a process that we need to keep up with as well. I think this is awesome. Thank you so much for this. Um, it, we didn't have meetings this November, December. Like it, it just was kind of crazy with everything that went on. So um, this is this is great that um, this was on the agenda tonight. So just just for my own clarification. So when you broke it down, the top four that I saw that you talked about was you broke it down into content, grade level, teacher level, and then student. Uh, yes, content area, teachers, uh, subjects in within the content. Subject. Okay. Um, ultimately, looking at students uh, and grade levels. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the deltas that you made here. I think that's a great way to kind of let's look at last year's and this year and compare. Yeah. I think that and, I, and all that and and you know that's all that's all raw data. Um, right. Any type of of report that would be um, would be given would not have specifics on students or teachers. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, I would. Yeah. You know, we're, we need to look at it as a whole so we right. can know those are all going. internal documents. Yeah. Um, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't certainly want that and I go through that. So I, I appreciate that. The, I just had a question about the reducing the percentage that counts towards your final grade. So that that's a two-edged sword, right? Because okay. for the students who, you know, if the final percentage was ten percent and now it's only going to be five percent, if I got a hundred on my final, it's not going to boost me. And, you know, and I, I I had a student who he calculated to the percentage point <laughs> how much he needed to yeah. pass the course. Oh sure. And they so do. and that's. Because that meant how much effort he had to put into study, <laughs> and so these kids are not dumb. They're nope. smart. They no. know it, and they know what kind of effort they want to put in. And those that really want to put major effort, they're going to study and they're going to do what. Yeah. Then they well, that, that would be interesting because looking at last year's data to see where that changes are: were students using it to get a higher grade, right. or were they affected getting a lower grade? As compared to next year, they may have to put a little bit more effort in, right? And yes, to get, a higher get to that percent, final right? Exam which I think, them, which I don't have a problem with. That. No, I don't. Have, hard work is is hard work is a good thing. So, you know, we should be studying and spending some hard time um, doing uh, doing the exam. So, um, any of my colleagues have any questions? I, I do want to discuss one more point a little bit. So. One of the measures that you've taken is the recommendations and you know, making sure not anybody and everybody gets whatever class they want, mm -hmm. which definitely is the right approach forward. But do we have documented criteria or is it any is it the way the teacher feels? Because there may be cases where I think the rule run right now is that if they miss a certain grade in the first or second marking period, the teacher will not recommend. And if they wave in, they cannot come back to the lower level of the course, right? Right. Is, the teacher recommendation is part of it, right? We there are, it. and if you look at prerequisites that are in the uh, program of studies, you'll see that um, it, a lot of it is grade related, a lot of it is math related. Um, so there is research based. Um, assessments that put students in in, 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 the, in the appropriate class. class right. So courses. I, I just wanted to kind of say it out loud that we aren't being overly strict in in that in that process mm -hmm. to look, to ensure our results are better. Mm -hmm. We will, because we will, then we will go from one extreme to the other, where we were allowing everybody to take it, and now we're not even allowing kids who probably should be taking it, but are not going to take it because they know they cannot come back down to the lower level because they. Right. Yeah. So the, the biggest issue that we had in previous years were students taking reaching, which, which I don't have a problem with. We want them to reach, reach to a certain But level. there's nowhere for them to go because we're so crowded in certain areas. There's It's difficult for a number of students to drop down from, I'm just going to honors chemistry to chemistry, right? I'm just that's put, that's picking that off the <laughs> Okay, just picking it off the top. <laughs> That was a big one year. That was a big that problem. Right? So they wanted on honors okay. chemistry. That's the final exam. <laughs> and okay, so now now I, I, I'm not going to be able to reach a potential. I'm not going to be able to pass a class. We need to drop down. I don't have a seat. We don't have a seat for you to go. Okay. So we're we, you were now putting you in a position to fail, right? Which we don't want to do. Um, so then this year, just the the qualitative aspect of it is significantly less 
the need for students to drop down a level. Still there. I mean, there are still students that have that request. Um, there are still students that may be recommended and maybe meet the, the standard to go to a level and, and it's too much for them. We have students that take a number of honors classes, a number of AP classes, and it's a lot. So, um, so, but it's a lot less than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say it out loud that we don't want to go from one extreme to the other. So right. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys have, you know, methods in place to make sure that kids that deserve to reach a little are allowed to reach a little. And, and it's mostly conversation. It's mostly yeah. talking with, um, Open, open people's eyes as well. That, that maybe, maybe it's not what it's supposed to be. Yes. I can. Yes, Sergeant. So you had touched on it. You said if you if you wade into it, you're not allowed to come down. If there's a seat though in a class, is the student can they put in a request that they if they waved into it in the end of September, they say this is too much. I'm not gonna be able to pass this. It, it, it's all situational at that point. It depends on the situation. Okay, so it's not just a flat out no, you're not allowed if, to if if to. there's if there is it's it's gotta be it's gotta be a pretty extreme situation. Um if there's a student that is in a level that they waved into and they're there and they're they're passing and they just don't want to work that hard, they're not gonna be able to move. That which which is what we see a lot. Um, if there's a situation where there is a, a situation that's going on that they didn't know existed in their family, or there's some some type of outside influence that is allowing them not to perform, everything at that point is is an individual case. Um, the the answer is when we have a conversation with students and parents this year, and there what is what we're being told by numbers, what we're being told by grades is that. You're not going to be successful successful at that level. We do not recommend that you go into that. If you take, if you go into that, then you have to stay there, and that's important that they understand that they have to stay there, unless there is some significant aspect to their next year. We never know what's going to happen next year, right? We we have a student that's going to go in and say, oh, "We're going to really try," and then something traumatic happens in their life, um, then everything becomes situational. But it's in, it's very important for our parents and our students to know that we have to have this rule because we could say yes to the first person and then the second, third, and fourth person we can't say yes to. They're not going to be fair. So that's why we have to hold a really hard line with that. And now, what if you waive a student or not waive? What if the student is recommended and takes the course? But then is not doing well. Right. Are they allowed to move down? They 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 are, but there is a there is a process for that. There is a drop level process for that that is actually, I believe, in policy. I know it's in our code of conduct, but it's actually a policy where they have um they have a certain amount of time to mm -hmm. ask for that change. And then after that it becomes more of a process. Um it goes to a vice principal level, we have to have a parent meeting, and then if it has to go to a principal level after that, we don't get it. But we try to keep Students in places that they are. Um, what we do see a lot of is we have students with the ability to stay in the level and they, they're choosing not to make that effort. Um, so, I mean, students with 85s, 90s in a certain level, but they don't want to stay there because they don't want the effort. That's a very big conversation to have because it would really be unfair to a student that really may need to move there. And then you talk about people that transfer in, right, that have to go into certain sections. So. It's imperative that we do keep certain seats open in different sections, but you know we will run into problems like we did, and I'll bring chemistry back up. We had no seats, zero seats in a, in a chemistry level where people could move into those sections. So we really try to keep we really try to keep a hard line. But I, like I said, everything is situational when it comes to to a new year. Um, but we really try to keep a hard line to make sure that we're we're protecting protecting the integrity of those classes. That just makes a lot of sense. If I'm, if I just make one comment. Um, it's not related um, to to finals or to waivers. I just want to make a statement because I know that when people are watching. So one of the things that I I, I think we need to uh, impress upon is that responsibility, of course, with your school counselors, but we want the parents and the children to be reading the program of studies. Program of studies. Thank you. They need to know what is required of them to graduate. They need to know freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. We have. Um, changed, not lowered, we have changed the standards to meet the state requirements. 
we follow the state requirements and we want to make sure that everybody knows we have plenty of room. We know there's plenty of room in the schedules to yeah. take very simple classes. We have some parents working with their children. We hope it's the children working with the parents um, that impress upon. They want to take this. They're excited. They want to take that. But we have requirements. So all I'm saying, because I'm being videoed, so we can put it out there. And I'm, if you could just end it by repeating me that what, what must they do? Look in. Look in the program oh, studies. Sorry. By the way, just, Thank you. <laughs> I'll just add this because I never gave this update. We did redo the program studies this year. And I will thank uh, Ms. Terry Weiss, the vice principal of high school, who helped um, put this together. Uh, we've spent a couple of years looking at different ways to redo the program of studies, and we just we came up with a Google website this year that That's is a nice. little bit more interactive. The PDF is still there if you would like to read 120 pages of the program of studies. If not, you're oh, able. Ready to, yesterday. If, you're, if not, you're able to click on different areas, um, and it has a lot of information. It's now live. It's now we can build upon it. And keep going. And it is on the first page of the high school page for the website. If you go to the high school page, it's right there. It's in the activities right across. It's the third one from the left. Program of study. Excellent. So it's there. This is absolutely awesome. It was one of the questions I was going to ask you, but I opened it up and found that it is definitely because um, it is it is a it's a bear of a document, but a lot. it's an important document when you're picking your classes for school in high school. And this is nothing compared to when you go to mm -hmm. classes for college. Because college, if you've ever seen college program study documents, they are exciting. Mm -hmm. This they're they're crazy. And I remember the big sheets that would come off the IBM computers and, and showing my that, age a little bit. That matrix, that matrix, yeah, yeah, that, that, those were the IBM cards and all those yeah. Those things. So that's great. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. that. Can I Sorry, I took up Zach's time. You have less than thirty seconds because I want to give the it program all the study time. Is great. But I was at the student liaison meeting with Dr. Chandy, mm -hmm. and uh, what came out from the students is that there is not enough education on the program of studies uh, to eight graders coming in here, and even students that are here. Um, I think I think we need to do a little bit more through maybe Schoology or Flight of Falcons or just and force, force them to read the program and study in the first few years because when it comes to a point when the counselor is meeting them in the gym and giving them 10 minutes to pick an elective and they have no clue, it's because they've never seen that thing. Their parents have seen it, but they have not seen it. Like, especially in the eighth and ninth grade, we see that a lot. So it, it came from the students and I wanted to make, point, you know, take this opportunity to mention yeah. that. I think we need sure. to, and, we, and all of us. And we can. I think Dr. Higgins and I, and uh, Dr. Lehman. And Dr. Higgins, Higgins in middle school as well. Can easily well. work together. We yeah. use, we utilize Naviance in both eighth grade as well as ninth grade. We grew up with Dr. Fratelli. And I think we absolutely, similar to how we now go to Janesburg schools. I think it'll be easy to do here, and I think it's something, it's just that comfort level. Yeah. What is this? I know what this is. I've seen it. I've done it. I've looked at it. I've played with it online. I agree, and I think it's something we can easily do. So, in and like this. and also the, the, um, the eighth grade orientation video is the program of studies. And right. it, it's the new one it's a, it well, has that, a new one now? The new it, well, it's, 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 it's a video version of okay. what the program of studies is. Um, and that's been, we've been building on after 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you can lead a horse to water, right? <laughs> well, we just have to do a little bit more when there's been those students. Yes. We can, we can, we can definitely work on that. Just Appreciate just it. Watching. Go to the program of study so you know what you want to take and you don't have any surprises when the teacher says we have a final exam. Um, okay, money. Last thing on the agenda. Um, so, Robin, great you summer on your trips. Wrong. Uh, so, this is just an overview. We, we spoke, <clears throat> excuse me, a few months ago just about some of the new enrichment programs that we have added to the district this year. Um, this year, uh, for the first time, we started, we added after school enrichment programs here um, for our elementary and middle school learners. We did a culinary pre-vocational course uh, out of the high school and just recently we um, launched after school STEM and ro uh, computer science and robotics modules for our elementary learners. Um, and those, some of those are fee based. Um, we've also added advanced enrichment uh, during, uh, during zero period at the Monroe Township Middle School, which would be for more of our gifted and talented learners. That is not fee based as that's part of our gifted and talented services here in the district. That's what's being offered this winter and spring. Later this week or early next week, we'll be launching our after school enrichment modules for Barclay, or I'm sorry, for Brookside and Woodland School. Um, this is a new model that we've employed throughout the district to try to offer enrichment learning experiences. All of our courses that we offer 
uh, are taught by certified instructional staff in those content areas and our modules line up with our district approved curricula. Um, on the second page are the programs that we are proposing to offer at our summer program. This would be our fourth year uh, in our summer program. And we, we learned a lot last year. It was the first year we uh, were a fee-based program. And uh, we cleaned up some of our mechanisms and some of our procedures for how we're going to go about running this enterprise. Uh, Mr. Barandika brought uh, a new service to us, which we've been using for online registrations, which has installed a very significant um, uh, quality control mechanism into our procedures, um, which has allowed us to be more cost effective. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later this evening at the Finance Committee. But um, what you see in front of you is our is our proposed catalog. Uh, we have already uh, started advertising some of these programs. Uh, the bulk of them will go out prior to spring break, so our parents can make their decisions for what they want to do with summer. A um, couple other things we've done this year, as opposed to last year, if you look, if I know it's a tough read uh, off the spreadsheet, but uh, our, we, we stacked our programming and staggered them so, so parents could uh, attend more um, and have less conflicts. Uh, you'll also notice that we're a little bit more front loaded with our dates to try to make sure that we are available for any uh, enrichment services that we may want to be prepared for at the conclusion of the extended school year. Um, which would be later in the summer. Uh, you will also notice that even though it seems like uh, there's more programs, as many new programs on here, we will, uh, our intent is to build out staffing capacity. Um, there's actually less sections than have been offered last year. Uh, and that's just for uh, purposes of cost effectiveness. As sections sell, sell out, uh, we will add more. Uh, case in point, we launched the Applegarth uh, co uh, Club Code uh, two weeks ago. The fifth grade section sold out in less than 12 hours, so we added another one. And uh, we're not going to overcommit financially or from a staffing perspective, but if the student demand is there, we'll continue to add sections. And as we build our staff, um, those are the conversations that um, we're having with them. So uh, we're looking forward to getting uh, kids in, in new learning experiences. And uh, we're already uh, reaping the benefits of these new programs. Uh, we were cold called by Colts Neck uh, a couple of days ago at the middle school that heard that we were running some of these programs and they wanted to, to scrimmage us in the robotics. It'll be the first middle school competitive robotics competition. So they're already receiving dividends. Um, and, and again, many of these programs are the uh, offshoot of some of the grant funded programs that we've launched uh, through the ESSER grant and other various uh, programs uh, that Ms. McLeod ran and Ms. Russ last year and then some of the things that we did over the summer. So, uh, you can see that the program is a little more focused. They're, they're, they're not as generalized as they've been in the past. Um, there will be new curriculum uh, this summer to drive these programs because many of our students will be coming back for the fourth time. So we want to make sure that they have fresh experiences. Excellent. Excellent. So I have a quick question. I know um, every one of these classes is going to sell out. We're going to be looking at a bit more. But so. do you have a minimum enrollment that you've set up so that if, if there's a particular thing on here, um, you know, nobody wants to do summer concert band. Are we going to not do summer concert band? Nice. Nice. Yeah, no. So yeah, uh, uh, and, all. And, and that's going to be the challenge. And that, and and each each course is going to carry a different price point. And I think it's important to you know this is our goal is is obviously to to generate revenue, but it's also we have to be cognizant of of the monetary taxpayer and and, their, and the costs. So our costs scale based on how expensive the programs are to run. Uh, obviously, a culinary course uh, or a woodshop course is going to be more expensive. Uh, we do have the benefit of we absorb most of the costs that we would need to operate this uh, program last summer up front. And we discussed that uh, last fall. Right. So uh, one of the reasons that we feel really good about um, this, this, this venture this summer is that we, you know, those costs are, you know, there's going to be costs inevitably. But we feel like the bulk of it has already been absorbed. But to answer your question directly, each program has a break even point. Um, if we don't hit it, we won't run it. And it, okay. it's clear in the postings that we offer to our staff, and it's also clear to the public that these are dependent on student enrollment. Fortunately, we have we have yet need uh, we have yet to uh, rescind an offering, um, but that is why we are not overcommitting in what we are offering. If uh, Project Code Summer Sphero session sells out, we will add another. Um, that for I'll give you an example for Club I was Code. Say, what's the number? Yeah, for Club Code, the one we were doing at Applegarth, the break-even point was 4.3 students per class, um, which we obviously hit. 
the culinary program would obviously be a little, be a little bit higher because that's going to be a more costly program. Right. Uh, so, you know, that number, I believe, for this winter was about 7.8 students. Mm -hmm. We round up students to the whole number. What do you try and stay within? Oh, I apologize. No, that's okay. I'm curious. What, what number for comfort level for appropriate instruction do you try and stay within where you would create a new class? Like uh, code, like the code class, because I know each class is different. What, what would we cap it at? Right. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the course. So, so like the, the project code uh, is kit based. So, you know, wow. generally you have four kids per kit. So, it, and, and for purposes of instructional fidelity. Yes. Um, you keep it around 20 to 25. Okay, Culinary, right. we generally try never to go over 20, whether right. it's middle school, high school, or whatever. Right. For safety. So the kitchens. You know, when, when it comes to other programs, uh, for example, one of our new programs, CAD is RAD. Uh, you know, we could probably Better live. We could probably live on the safe side of maybe on the good side of twenty five. You know, that's fantastic. Mm. That's great. <laughs> Cat is rad. <laughs> this sort of that was originally a placeholder, but it stuck. So you brought up a good point about staggering the times, and on some of the the, the, the dates, a class will end at like ten, and then another section of different classes will start at ten thirty. If a student signs up for both of them. Does the parent have to come attend, pick them up? And nope. We had a last year, we had a little area um, that the kids were able to read or use STEM kids. Summer so, bad. <laughs> what is it? Summer bad? What do you call it? Summer kids. Book club beach bed. It sounds a lot more fun for the kids at first. <laughs> and then, but luckily, it was, it, there was very seldom was there more of a uh, half an hour. Of, of lag time and you know is usually a way to motivate um, them to get their parents to get there on time if they were late or if they were ready to uh, move on to the next mm -hmm. next but there's you know there's staff throughout the, the building so there's never a situation when they're um, unsupervised okay. I do get a, a lot of feedback from parents that wish the sessions were longer and I just want to address this you know we're very specific with how long um, you know obviously the, the theater and the music programs tend to be a little bit longer um, you know, we do not want these programs to become a daycare center. You know, there are plenty of uh, opportunities throughout, uh, and I, I mean that respectfully, um, but but honestly, you know, these these are learning modules, and and there is a fee attached to it, and and so we've seen that the students that do come here come with the expect, ex expectation of learning and walking out of there with a transferable skill, and uh, we are very purposeful to avoid creating situations where it could just be drop off. Um, so we can run around. You know, Monroe Rec Camp is is here. We, you know, fantastic program. The library runs tremendous programs all summer long, and there's always athletic programs. Our our purpose is to supplement a child summer with an enrichment learning that hopefully gets them jacked up for what's coming in September, or just or uh, you know provides continuity of learning. Uh, so that's why we try to stagger programs. We try to be creative. We want to accommodate parents, but we also want to just, you know, set that standard. These are sort of, you know, that's why we hire certified teachers to run these programs, and they are expensive. Having certified teachers works. So we want to make sure that we get the bang for our buck. Uh, the other thing you'll notice that there's no remediation programs on this list. Uh, there's no uh, high school summer school, and there's no currently no summer or high school enrichment. Uh, those programs are still under development. We hope to come back with some some information on what we plan to offer for that in the future. Meeting. So I I have a question. Somebody else has another question. I um so <laughs> I didn't do anything. Are we? You know, no, I just it went in my head, out of hand, but it's back now. The uh, you mentioned Colts Neck and and everything, and I know we have had several side conversations just talking about are, are we planning are we looking towards the future of opening this up outside of our district yes to offer to others because i guess colts neck somebody must have said we have a great program here and we do this has been awesome for the last four years and i'm so excited to have been part of it um but are we planning on doing that so that that's we've discussed it and uh that's something that we would not be opposed to um we haven't crossed that bridge yet uh there would be there would be some things I would like to discuss with the administration about security, you know, setting expectations. You know, it is a we it'd be a, we've never really engaged in that type of venture before. I'm not opposed, but we're certainly not opposed to it. But I think we'd have to definitely check out some things, um, particularly when we start talking with older students and, and setting expectations and just it would just be I, I, we'd want to flesh that out. However. Um, that was something that we discussed doing last year, and I think it would definitely benefit the program and benefit the students mixing it up with kids from other towns. 
Uh, certainly would love to get James Byrd involved if, if it was appropriate. That's going to be my first question. Um, we all open this we up We receive program. inquiries regularly from Cranberry students, particularly with our music and art programs. You know, a lot of the smaller towns that surround our larger municipality, a lot of times they're very interested in our summer programs. Uh, they're very interested in our high school programs, um, which is something that, you know, over the next couple of weeks we'll be, work, we'll be speaking about with the high school administration and Dr. Lehman. One other question. Yes. Um, so we got approval from the county. I was waiting if I was just talking about it this summer, talk about it next time. <laughs> oh, okay. Personal finance. Yeah, right. So we, um, this summer that we're going to. Yes. Offer? So what happened was, and I was waiting, I was going to bring it up in April, but we Sorry. can bring it up now and that's fine. Um, we reached out. Um, it is something that has happened in the past and we were told, no, we were not given approval. So I reached out to our county executive superintendent, uh, Mr. Anderson, and I said that we are excited about offering certain courses. We provided the courses. And additionally, we were very excited. We'd like to be able to go ahead and move forward with personal finance. It's something that we've asked for in the past and we weren't able to move forward with. Could we have your permission? And I want to say he did provide us permission. So we're very excited that we're finally, finally going to have personal finance within our own district for children to be able to take. So that's something that um, Ms. Moraldo and I started talking about, uh, and Dr. Lehman, having that conversation and it's something absolutely we'd like to put into place for the summer. Yeah, we look a lot at uh, some of the neighboring like high the schools, uh, what they've been doing quite successfully yep. uh, with their high school programming, uh, but we wanna make sure we do it right yep. uh, thoroughly. And uh, we're excited about what that could mean about potentially building capacity for, for some more creative programming, but also thinning out some of our you know, AP courses that, uh, or non-AP courses that are heavily populated. Um, so we think it's a nice opportunity, but also to to give our learners more flexibility in pursuing what they want. Within our own district. So and, and you know, it's also districts. not, the, it, it, the exciting thing about this is that um, it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to uh, personal finance and economics. Correct. And when we think about, as students tend to start specializing in their academic trajectory, we can now wrestle a little bit of that back, particularly when we think about humanities, the arts, um, and some of these other pre-vocational courses that may be otherwise inaccessible um, during the 10-month school year. Excellent. No, that's excellent. Thank you for bringing that forward. I appreciate that. That's yes, I was very excited to receive that's the email. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'm excited for all the different things. So that concludes the curriculum committee meeting for March 2024. More to go, folks. Let's not get. <laughs>